or Jeffrey, one of the two? I think Carolyn. Um, but we both um, follow the Saturday with Jeffrey Cole. He's just a wonderful motivator and he's just such a great person. And he's always been very supportive of us. And I just, every time I can, and he's just fabulous. We were just earlier this month. Um, his passion is assisting others and helping around him. Benefit from the residual income um, that through living the life of their dreams. Um, Scott also assists other network marketers in 24 different countries, which is pretty cool. Um, kind of stirred the pot for me when I, I read that. And helps them to use and implement and grow their businesses through using LinkedIn. Just in the last year, Scott has grown his connections from 2,500 to 9,500 with an average of 15 calls per week, resulting in three to six enrollments each month. So his passion is being exerted to the network marketing industry and teaching all those around them to on how to improve their businesses. And I am not going to say one more word because he's going to just, just Rock your world. Please help me welcome this guy. Well, first I want to say uh, it's an honor uh, and a pleasure to be here. Um, make sure people can see. Okay. I can do like a Facebook Live, but I don't know where people can see me. So, um, so I've been a network marketer for a little over three years now, and this was my first network marketing experience. And for me, when I got started, I really didn't know what I was doing because I don't think anybody really does. You guys can relate to that. You're, you're looking at this blank canvas and you have no clue what you're looking at, what needs to be done, and, and how to accomplish it, right? So when I, when I realized that, I learned uh, a couple key things right away, which is to obviously listen to your upline because they, you said yes for a specific reason. You know, you said yes because you heard something they said or saw something that they saw where you wanted to take that leap. So network marketing has, has changed drastically over the last five years. Um, how many people in here have been in network marketing for over three years by a show of hands? Over five years? Over 10 years? Okay, so you guys obviously have seen the big change, you know? There was no social media. There was home parties, there was belly to belly, there was coffee dates and lunch dates and dinner dates. And when social media started to become the forefront of not only how we live our lives, but how we communicate with people, it was just the perfect mesh for network marketing and building a business. Because the idea is to be able to connect with as many people as we can, right? to build the biggest network we can possible, to connect with the most people possible, to present this opportunity to. Am I right? So how many people in here use social media to build their business by a show of hands? Okay. How many people do not? Okay, that's okay. Um, so first and foremost, to build a network marketing business today, if you are not on social media, it is not going to work. It's not. The reason why I say that is because the sheer numbers and the sheer volume of conversations that you are required to have to find the few, the ones that are sitting in this room, you're not gonna be able to do that by doing two or three coffee dates a day. That takes a lot of your time. If you're, if you're able to find a nice quiet space to work from where you can connect and have 15, 16, 17 calls a day where you're smiling and dialing, as opposed to driving to Starbucks and then driving to meet someone for lunch and then you know that a 15, 20 minute phone call is gonna be an hour and a half off your lunch date. And before you know it, six or seven hours have gone by and you've only spoken to three people, right? And if you compound that every day, every week, every month, you're only speaking to a few people. For me, I try to get on the phone with anywhere between 25 to 50 people per day. Yeah. Per day, that's my goal. Because 
you know, I read, so, has anyone read The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale? No? Write that book down. Um, you repeat that again, please? The Strangest Secret. It was, I, I believe he recorded it in the early 1960s. And The Strangest Secret, it's a, it's a 36 page book or it's a 45 minute audio. You can go right on YouTube and type in Earl Nightingale, Strangest oh, Secret. And it's, it's amazing. Like literally you can be in your car, just turn it on, listen to it. He basically said that you need the law of numbers so far in your favor that success is inevitable. That's what he says. And, it, and it, I believe that because if, if you're talking to enough people, then you have no choice but to succeed. It's the, the, the people that get the most frustrated with their businesses are the ones that are not having enough conversation. Am I right? Because then you say, well, this isn't working anymore. Uh, you know, there's no one left to talk to. I'm not having enough conversation. I haven't blown anybody in six weeks. And before you know it, they don't, no one puts in their, their two weeks notice. They just kind of sneak out the back door. And then you don't hear from them ever again. So there was something else interesting that I, I uh, was watching a podcast by Eric Worre. Is everyone familiar with Eric? Yes. GoPro. So Eric was talking about something that, that he had heard Gary Vaynerchuk say, and it was about the network marketing model, this, that, or the other. And, and you know, Eric is such a servant to the industry. He's just, I'm such, such a huge fan of his, and he's such an influence of mine. He was talking about the model of network marketing how it is real, it works, but also it's the easiest for people to step away from because if they find that it's not working, what are they really losing? A couple hundred dollars a month that they're walking away from? If they're not making money, you know, they're stopping doing what they're doing for the business and they kind of sneak out the back door. But So what I teach my team and what I teach everyone that I speak to is that if you treat this business like it was a $250,000 investment, do you think you would be going about this a different way? Yes. Yes. That's the mindset that you need to have. If you treat this business like a million dollar business, you will have million dollar habits. If you treat this like a few hundred dollar a month business, you're gonna have penny and five cent habits, which isn't gonna get you anywhere. So, Back to social media, it's king. I mean, there are, there are people that, that build incredible organizations on social media. And I actually added up my numbers between Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I have around 25,000 people in my network that I'm connected to. And some people are like, wow, that's a lot of people. But the way I see that, it's only 25,000 people. I mean, how many millions of people just live in Pennsylvania? And I'm not connected to them yet. So it just shows that everybody has that much more room to grow. Does that make sense? Yes. So I wanted to talk about three different platforms today. And if you guys have any specific questions at any point, you can stop me. Yes. I forgot, sorry. On your table, guys, there are those yellow cards. And as you think of questions, just jot them down, and then we'll make sure at the end of the presentation that they're covered. So everybody grab a card and just have that there. Sorry, thanks. For yeah, so I mean, if you have a question, you can write it down, you can hand it up to me, and I can, I can answer it. So before I begin, how many people, by a show of hands, are enjoying what they're doing on social media and feel that they're getting back what they want for their business by a show of hands. <laughs> by another show of hands, how many people are unhappy with what they're getting back from their social media? Okay, good. So you guys are gonna learn a lot from today. Um, so I wanted to talk about three specific platforms because here's the thing. What I, what I also learned is that you don't need to master every single platform. You just need to be really good at a few. You know, when, when you hear all these people that they're, you know, they're posting here, posting there, doing this, doing that, when you start to dilute what you're doing and you can't really focus on the network that you're looking to build, you kind of lose focus. And you're, when you're unfocused, you're not attracting the right people into your business, which should be a mirror image of yourself. And that's the number one thing that you guys need to take away. 
is that who you are and who you are becoming is exactly the person that you want walking right beside you. So the mindset that you have, the belief that you have, the trust that you have, that is the type of person that you're looking for. So for me, I'm looking for people that are mirror images of myself, whether that's business-wise, whether that's hobby-wise, whether that's just mentality-wise. You know, I ask people all the time, I'm looking for someone that's open, coachable, motivated, entrepreneurial, driven, and happy. Do you feel that is you? And if they say yes, then I continue with the conversation. And if they say no, then I say, okay, well, I appreciate your honesty. You know, you're not the one looking for my business. Best of luck, and my door's always open. Does that make sense? So if you can clearly define in your mind who you're looking for, like we all do vision boards, right? So if we're doing a vision board, what's that? You put good looking at it. If we're doing if we're doing vision boards for the life that we are looking to create, right? Why not do a vision board for the people that we're looking to bring into our business? Does that make sense? So so create a separate separate platform and a separate vision board of your team, of the people that you want to change their life physically or financially. Because again, yeah, we're based at that, we're, we're, we're a customer-based industry. But you know, a lot of those customers end up getting great results and they want to start sharing this. So when you can empower yourself to let people know the main objection of your, the main object of your life is to free people from physical and financial pain, that is powerful. That is something that people can get beside. But you gotta understand, societal belief is not what we believe. Like, whenever I'm in these kind of rooms, whether it's a, it's a room of 30, or a room of 300, or 3,000, that is the real world. This is the real world. <coughs> the mindset that we all have, that we can create everything and anything we want, that's what you want to believe, because that's what's real. Because here's the thing, when every single one of us was a little kid, and how many people in here have children? So how many times has your, your son or daughter said to you, I want to be this? Have you ever said, no, you can't be that? You say, sure, you could be the president. absolutely should not climb, they jump off of things they should not jump on, but they get right back up and they just move right along. But something happens as we get older. Whether it's a traumatic experience, whether it's doubt by the circle of influence that we're around, that, that unstoppable belief that we had as kids starts getting pressed down, right? It starts getting pushed away from what we're looking to achieve. So Les Brown, I'm sure everyone knows who Les Brown is, Les Brown talks about shifting your thoughts and your mentality back to that of what it was when we were children. So if you can start thinking that everything is possible, you can achieve anything that you want, it starts to push those negative influences that are in your life away from you. And does, that, does anyone know in here who the most negative influences in our life are? Close. Yes. Family. Oh. Yeah. They're called sheeple. <laughs> sheeple. They want they you know they don't want you leaving from the herd. You know, whenever you start to do something different, no, it's weird. That's a, that's a pyramid. Oh, you're you're one of those people. Yeah, I absolutely am one of those people. So when you guys can start separating yourself, like I love my family more than anything. I love, I love them for who they are, where they are, and what they stand for, but my team, they're also my family. You know, those are the ones I, I hang out with them most because your circle of influence 
whether it's me influencing you today to do things a little bit differently, or the people on your team, your remote sponsor, it might not be your remote sponsor. It might be someone above your remote sponsor. It might be someone in your downline. Because sometimes your remote sponsor, their job was to give you the opportunity that you have, but it might not have been the right thing for them. So how many people have experienced that where their, their remote sponsor kind of just closed it away? And that's okay. Because no one is going to build this business for you. You have to build it for you. So what you guys also have to realize is that when you say yes, whether it's you or someone that you're enrolling, you are automatically in a leadership role. You can go to people for advice and what to do and what to say and how should I do it, but they're teaching you how to become a leader, right? If you lean too hard on someone, you're not gonna learn how to do this yourself. Go back to our children. When they, they, you know, they're not walking right away, they're rolling over, they're crawling, they're standing themselves up, they're cruising, then they're walking. And now they're, they're on their own. That's what we have to do for ourselves and that's what we have to do for our teams. Good? Cool. All right, so, no matter how old you are, it's never too late to start learning about social media. My father's in my business. He's starting to get it. He's 64. You know, I don't try to push him, but it, it doesn't matter how old or how young you are. The way that we get good at things is by practice. And it's not practice makes perfect because perfect doesn't exist. Practice makes practice. Yeah. Except for what? Practice makes practice. So I'm still. I still haven't figured it all out. I'm still working and honing my skills to become the best at what I do. Not being the best, my best. So the three platforms that I focus on most are Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And I went from my least favorite to my absolute favorite. And that's how I'm gonna cover it. So Instagram. How many people are not on Instagram? Okay, create an account. It's very easy. So Instagram, and you got you guys have to understand the platform. I mean, I could literally talk about it for about seven hours. The, the the platform of Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn are so so different. Like, I mean, incredibly different. So. If you're on Instagram, you know that it's just pictures. Just pictures. Facebook, pictures, videos, quotes, posts, events, and then there's LinkedIn. LinkedIn is also, you know, pictures and articles and but LinkedIn is a lot of the back office work. A lot of the things that happen on LinkedIn happen behind closed doors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys tips and things that you can do right now to start really building your businesses using these three platforms. My specialty is LinkedIn. I'm, I'm good at Facebook. I mean, that's how I started building my business and I was telling Maureen that my first 90 days in my company, I enrolled 120 people. 48 people is my best month. I was doing it with reckless abandon. I had no clue what I was doing. A lot of those people don't really exist in my business anymore because you don't know what you're doing. You're literally fumbling forward. And what I got really good at is LinkedIn. Um, I, I coached people in over 30 different companies, five different countries, um, and I've taken my connections now to over 10,000 in just 13 months with the free version. I do not pay for premium. And I'm gonna give you ideas and I actually, came here with the idea of you guys leaving here with the notion of you know exactly what you guys need to do and I have put together something special that I want to do for all of you guys at the very end and that's what I'm going to go over with you. So first, Instagram. So Instagram is just like any other social media forum. You need to post at least three times a day. So what you guys also have to realize, social media is a job. If you want to build your brand, if you want to build your business, you need to be on social media. And I know people have 
you know, that that fear or maybe that I feel bad about having your phone like this because you don't want to take away from your wife, your husband, your kids. And I understand that. I'm the same way. You need to, you need to dedicate blocks of time for your business on social media. So you have to designate family time or spouse time. But in between that, how many people are doing this business full time right now? Show our hands. One person, okay. How many people are doing this more than part time? How many people are doing it part time? And how many people are doing it in the pockets of their time? Okay. So, what you have to realize when I said yes to this opportunity for me, um, I didn't even tell you about myself. I don't, I mean, I don't. But, <laughs> So I've been in the health and wellness industry for 18 years. I've been a fitness club owner, personal trainer, and sports nutritionist. Um, I got into personal training because I fell in love with helping people get healthy. And I quickly built a very, very successful six-figure personal training business within four years. Uh, I started training when I was 19, I'm 37 now. And what I realized is that I I was trading time for dollars, and my biggest fear was actually when I became a parent, that's when SHIT got real, mm -hmm. because I wanted to be physically and emotionally available for my son, um, and I couldn't do that if I was at the gym training until 9 o'clock at night, so I was looking for something else. I didn't know what that something else was, but it ended up being network marketing. And I thank God every single day that one of my closest friends, Jody Bianca, presented this opportunity for me because, and then my, my buddy Todd Siddons, we were actually getting off a plane in Hawaii, and he grabbed my arm and he stopped me. And he says, look where we are right now. And I said, I know, he goes, he goes, do you realize that that one clear moment that you had where you said yes, led you to where you are right now. And I was like, wow. I said, he was right. So all it takes is a moment. So when I said yes, I was working about 75 hours a week. I was putting in about 320 hours a month of personal training. I've done over 40,000 hours in my career. And when you want to talk about little pockets of time where I had to squeeze this in. This was literally driving to appointments in between 15 minute clients, like literally outside of my house getting ready to go in. I built this in the pockets of my time. And within two years, I was able to create a residual income that matched that of my full-time personal training profession. I had my first five figure month in 23 months and I haven't looked back since. Um, and then as Maureen said, I was able to fully retire from personal training and owning my fitness club, which I closed back in July of this year. So I am completely in free enterprise company too. So I don't say that to impress you, but to impress upon you that it, all you need to do is continue to take steps forward and you're gonna get there. And there's no timetable. Everyone says, well, how long does it take? How long does it take? I still ask myself that question because I have a lot of friends that are doing extremely, extremely well. And, and I'm very blessed and lucky to work beyond where I am right now, but I haven't even hit, I haven't even left the ground floor yet. And neither have any of you. So don't compare yourself because obviously comparison is the root of all evil. And that's something that I really had to realize is that just focus on yourself and focus on the people that, that, that you're gonna change their life the way that the person that enrolled you changed yours. So, when you're on Instagram, again, at least three posts a day, you can go up to five. As far as designated times, morning is always good between seven and eight a.m. when people are getting ready for work, eight to nine p.m. after people get home from work. Lunch time is always good between 12 and one. Dinner time is always good. The key to Instagram is not so much what you post, it's the content that you provide behind it. Hashtags. Is everybody familiar with hashtags? Does anyone know what ha No? I don't understand them. So, <laughs> <next question, laughs> so my next question was gonna be, 
Does anyone know what hashtags actually do? Not really. Um, so what hashtags do is they provide a search engine for that specific thing that you're speaking about. So on Instagram, if you hashtag life and someone happens to click on that hashtag that is not connected to you, at some point you will come up in that search of people that have hashtag life. So it's a way for people to connect to you. Does that make sense? So if you're posting a picture of a salad, you want to do hashtag salad. If you're posting a picture of your kids, hashtag kids. If you're taking a picture of yourself at the gym, hashtag fitness, hashtag fit. So you gotta understand the picture represents what you're actually hashtagging about. Yes. Oh, look for hashtags? Like I yes. hashtag, okay, because I didn't know how, I never look for hashtags. So like if I, if I knew a before and after, yeah. I always hashtag weight loss. So, because people will actually go on Instagram and they'll search for weight loss and that'll come up in the hashtags. So if they scroll through and they see a transformation that really speaks to them, they're going to start following you and they'll message you. Because you can do private messaging um, through Instagram. So it's like your own catalog, your cataloging thing. Correct. Right? Yeah. And you need, you need to do at least 8 to 12 hashtags per post. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Question. How, how does that hashtag link get to your particular picture? You put it in there. So when, when, you, when you upload your picture, it'll say say something about this. And you can you can write a regular sentence like I love my life, this you know, you know, free enterprise is the best, and then you can do hashtag free enterprise, hashtag free, hashtag lady boss, whatever you want. But it this is the other thing that I learned from my buddy Joe, who's really, really good at Instagram is that it has, it has to be successive. So there can't be any spaces in between your hashtags because there's actually a, a, a connectedness that happens in between the hashtags where it has to flow. If there's a break, then it actually skips over the next hashtag. So it won't come up in a search. So if you guys want to follow me on Instagram so you can see what I do, it's Scott underscore Aaron, A-A-R-O-N. You can send me a connection. You can see what I post and how I kind of label things. Like, I always take pictures of the healthy food that I eat because for some reason, Instagram people love sushi and they love salads. Like, they just love it. Yes? So you don't eat french fries? Is that what you're telling me? No. Sometimes there's no proof of that. <laughs> yes? So, I have my Instagram set up that I have to approve the follow me. I would take that off. Okay, because I'm thinking, like, I always have these strangers yeah. to come up all the time, but now I'm going here, could they possibly have been clicking on yep. the book yes. or the or healthy skin or whatever, and now and you're I'm, I'm fascinated by this. I'm like, how many strangers even know that? So, so your Instagram name should be you. So if anyone, like, like try to disguise as their name, like, you know, near and Queen one or whatever, you know, <laughs> don't, don't do that. You know, you want people to be connected to you and not what your opportunity is. So like mine used to be Scotty Philly Fit, but I, I changed it and now it's Scott Aaron because I want people to get to know me. Yes. So there's many Scott Aaron. So it should, it's Scott and then underscore Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, we have Scott Fitness. There's a couple. So it should say. There's the fitness, there's the recipe. It's, yeah, it's a second, the bodybuilding picture. Yeah, it's a second one. Fitness. Oh, you're good, Thank you. <laughs> so, any, any other questions about that? I've noticed people on Instagram, they hashtag a couple, you know, in their, like, beginning posts, and then they go back in and, like... Comment. Right. So, what is the driving force behind that? So, whether you're putting it in the post or the comment, like, if you were to, like, comment on my post, and you know, then I would actually write you back, like reply, and I can leave some other hashtags. It's another way to draw more people into it because, yeah, because the comment section and just the general message will still bring people in. Because I didn't understand it because all of a sudden everybody started doing it, and I was like, what did I miss? It's just so funny because, some, like, I'll 
think my friend Vicky, I, I love her so much. She she uh, posted a picture on Facebook after she finished a boxing class, and she used the hashtag sweat, sweats like a man. And it was really, really funny because she was just drenched. And she goes, I sweat like a man. So she hashtag sweat like a man. And I, it, it, honestly, it was one of the funniest hashtags I've ever read. So you have to understand the hashtag can represent anything. Hashtag great hair day, but it has to be like all successive. So like, you know, there's no spaces. It, you know, people have to like read what it says. But the great thing about Instagram is that when you start to type out a hashtag, Instagram automatically searches that hashtag and it will actually show you the traction that it's gotten. So it will show you the amount of times other people have used that hashtag. So if you're about to use a hashtag that maybe has only gotten 10,000 uses, but then you go to another one that's gotten like 2 million, use the one that's gotten 2 million uses. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions? I don't understand. How does it not lead into to somebody else's site? Well, there's no so it's, it puts you into a, it puts you into a group of the same people that are using the same hashtags. Yes. She put it on. Already. Yeah, she put it on. <laughs> Does that make sense, guys? So you want to use one that has a lot of. Yeah. So, like, if you hashtag, so if you type in hashtag and you start to type out fitness, it'll actually before you actually go to the next hashtag, it'll show you. Like it'll say hashtag fitness and then a number next to it. That number represents how many people have used that same hashtag. Okay. So like you ever guys see what you ever see YOLO, Y O L O, you guys know what that means? You only live once. <laughs> so when you type in hashtag YOLO, there's a lot of people that use that, like fifty eight million people. So it's again that, that puts you into a big pool, but if it's a very highly used hashtag it's going to draw more people to you. You want the more popular hashtags being used. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know a lot of this might not make sense, but like I said, you just have to start doing it, and then it will make sense. Yes. It just takes time. Yes? I just heard that you shouldn't, like, or people get annoyed when you do it to five times a day. Like, people say, why are you those are the people that you don't want in your business. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I experienced the same thing like with my friends when I started really getting on social media, but um, I've just out, outgrown them a lot. Like um, social media wise, not personally, I'm still a kid at heart, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter what anyone thinks. You're doing this to change people's lives. The people that, like the dream stealers, the, the energy vampires that are all around us, those are the ones that are trying to bring us down. They're, they're trying to get under your skin to say, that's why, why are you posting so much? It's really annoying. Because then what happens? You get, you, you get emotionally attached to what that person is saying, and then you're like, oh, well, if she feels that way, then I think everybody else does, and then you stop. Before you know it, you're taking little steps out the door. You have to use that as motivation. So I forget who said it. Oh, it was uh, Grant Cardone. Does anyone follow Grant Cardone? No. Oh, really? yeah. 10X rule, the book. Get it? 10X rule. It's had it 10 times your entire life. And he has his own YouTube channel. He does three YouTube lives every single day. He's insane. Like, literally insane. He was telling a story how he lives in Miami and he got five speeding tickets in a row every day by the same cop. <laughs> and on the sixth day, the cop looked over and he goes, you again? He goes, yeah. He goes, give me the ticket. He goes, he goes why are you driving so fast? He goes, because I don't have any time to waste. I gotta get to my office. I gotta, I gotta build my business. He goes, just give me the ticket. Put me on my way. <laughs> that, that's how insane this guy is, but but it's, it's, a, it's a good obsessive insane. So he talks about, yes, Grant Cardone. He's awesome. Like, literally, he's awesome. I'll give you all my influences and, and books that I've read so you guys can start plugging in. So he talks about, he goes, I don't care if it's negative or positive feedback. I just want people talking. True. Because if people are talking, they're watching what you're doing. What's that? Exactly. Exactly. 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people are saying, just as long as they're talking. Okay. So Instagram is important. The reason why I also like it is that you can actually connect it to your other social media forms. You can link <coughs> Instagram to Facebook, to Twitter, to a Facebook page, to Tumblr if you have. Does anybody know what Tumblr is? Okay, so you can connect it to Tumblr. So with the click of one post, you can send it to multiple different social media sites. That's why I love it. And then if someone is not, if someone is on your, your Facebook feed, but they're not connected to you on Instagram, it actually will come up on Facebook from Instagram. They can click on that. It'll open up their Instagram page and then they can follow you. Cool. Do you do that in the back office of Instagram? So on Instagram, it'll, um, it'll, it'll like underneath the post, it'll have like a little swipe like it is to turn on or off your Wi-Fi and you just have to verify your account. So if you swipe forward to turn Facebook on, it'll ask you for your uh, username and password, and then it'll verify the account, and then it'll link to your Facebook. Then you can post it both at the same exact time. Where do you, um, not to be stupid, but where do you go to it? Okay. I'm on my Instagram. Okay. So, so when you go on Instagram. Don't look at my picture. Swipe to the left and turn on Facebook, it's going to turn to blue. Okay. Okay. See that? So pick a picture and go to post it. So get to where it says share, but don't share it. Want me to do it on your phone? So you're going to select photo. You're going to select next. Next. And then there's all. So just swipe over till it turns blue. Got it. And then that'll do it forever. So yep. So then, do you have a Twitter feed? I do. So then you can basically, you can authorize Twitter. But you just have to put your username and password so you can post to Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the same time. So that would be three times a day with For all. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yes, you want to use log in with your phone or email or with that, and then you, it'll ask you for your username and password, it'll verify it and say you're now connected. So then when you post, you're posting to both. So does anyone else, um, does anyone know about Hootsuite? <coughs> Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E, and Buffer. Both of those, Buffer, B-U-F-F-E-R. Buffer is $10 a month, Hootsuite is free. You can download it in your, in your app store. They are, they are post planners. So you can download the app, you can connect to all of your social media sites. Facebook, a Facebook page, a Facebook group, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and you can pre-plan your posts. So if you don't, you know, I post at 7 a.m., I mean, I'm up at five, but if you're someone that sleeps past seven o'clock, but you want to make sure that you get your seven o'clock post out before you go to bed, you go on the Hootsuite, you upload a picture or you type something and you can preset that post to go out at 7 a.m. You schedule the post. So there are a lot of people that will actually spend Sunday night planning all their posts for the week. So then they just have to go back and kind of just check on the activity of what's going on. Does that make sense? 
What's the name of it again? Uh, Hootsuite, so H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E, and the other one is Buffer. Is Hootsuite still, if you have it, um, so many, you're only so many accounts for free, and you'll start adding more. And you can add four for free. Right now, uh, I, I use, um, so I'll use it for LinkedIn, Facebook, um, and then I have like a business page on Facebook. I'll use it for that. But then there's Instagram that allows you, like, that's the great thing about a lot of these sites that, that you know, you can post multiple things. LinkedIn, you can post to Twitter and LinkedIn at the same time off of LinkedIn. And just like I showed you guys, on Instagram, you can hit Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter all at once. So you want to talk about really, really optimizing your social media skills, this is an easy way to do it. And, it, and it's fun. Like, it, this isn't so serious. This is about, like, showing people, like, a happy, healthy lifestyle. This is about influencing other people, you know, where people are like, you know, I, I love what you're doing. You know, I love following what you're doing. Does that make sense? Is everybody clear on the basics of how to use Instagram? Mm -hmm. Any other questions before I move on? Do you do both, Buffer and Um, it, it depends. Buffer for $10 a month. That's, so I pay for Buffer $10 a month, and that allows you uh, unlimited accounts. The reason why I like Buffer is because I have a business page um, and a product user page on Facebook, and you can actually pre-plan your posts for those as well. So it's nice because I don't, I don't have to be on all day. So, and it's also a business write-off, and it's only 120 hours a year, so it's worth it. So Hootsuite I use for kind of like general stuff, but um, as you guys are building your team, you should absolutely have you know, a team page for just your team, and you should have a product user page on Facebook for just your product users, and I like to utilize uh, Buffer for that so I can pre-plan posts into that. Make sense? So the hashtags go to everything, and so they're going to yep. Facebook and Facebook. Yes, and that's why you don't want to use too many because if you use like a ton of hashtags, your post gets drowned out by hashtags. You don't even see the actual post and, and what it actually represents. I thought you said eight hashtags. Yeah, well, I mean, but you'll see people that have like drunk a lot of hashtags. Like eight, eight, you'll, 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 you'll see when you do eight hashtags, it's maybe two lines long. It's not that much. Anything else before I move on? You guys good? Feel better about Instagram? Yeah. yeah. A little bit. It takes. Yeah, I, I do have one question. Are you yes. going to tell us like what's a post? Because a lot of people, and, and I'm good at this. We put our product out there, and I know you're with Isagenics, and you know, we don't see your boxes of yep. Isagenics or your shakes, or you show yes. the results. So I'm going to get into right now. So where I actually learned, how am I on time? No, no. You have till 9 o'clock. Facebook is how I got my start with social media. Um, there's many different methods. There's uh, Kurt Molly, friend of mine, amazing, amazing internet marketer, created the 1041, um, which was actually um, mastered by Alexis Romano, CG Siddons, Tara Romano, who are also in my company. Um, people can take that model and then you can kind of make it your own. So there are three optimal times to post on Facebook. These are all Eastern Standard, 7 to 8 a.m., 12 to 1 p.m., and 8 to 9 p.m. So before work, lunch break, after the kids go to bed. That's when people are most on Facebook. Now there's a couple other, there's one other mid-range time you can do like a 5 to 6 p.m. post like around dinner. So those times that you're on there, you want to post relevant content to that specific time that you're posting. So, you know, we guys, we're all in health and wellness. You guys focus mostly on skincare, is that correct? That's, that's your number one, and then you guys also have health and wellness behind it, um, products. So, the one thing that you need to do automatically is start people's day off with inspiration and motivation. So you guys can, can connect with me on Facebook, just 
just you, I, I sometimes it allows you to, to, to send me a request. Sometimes you just have to follow me. I have like that limit or whatever it is, but it's fine as long as you're following me. You'll see what I do every morning at 7 a.m. I mean, Maureen and I are friends on Facebook. I post something inspirational every single morning, and it's actually me. I actually wake up early and I, I, you know, I did a post the other day after coming back from yoga and just, I was walking out of yoga and I was just really just hearing the birds chirping and the fresh crisp air. Like I was just like, I just felt grateful for that moment. And I talked about that just about, you know, be, be grateful for everything that you have and that you're about and just take all the beauty in your life. And that's what I posted. That can relate to a lot of people because you have to realize there is a lot of negativity out there, especially right now. And it, it's our job to inspire those around us to flush away that negativity so we can actually bring some peace, love, and joy into people's lives. So you always want to start your morning off with inspiration. You can go to Google, you can type in motivational pictures or motivational quotes, and you can just upload that if you want. Or, you know, you can just type in motivational quotes, you can copy and paste, you know, uh, a post or a quote from Robin Sharma or Harry Truman and just post that. Or you can come up with something original, something yourself. Now, for those that want to get really super duper fancy, there's an app called Word Swag. So it, it, you can tap into um, pictures on your camera roll. Uh, like my girlfriend, Tara, taught me. She, she loves it. She had me down it. It's great. Or they have like pre, pre planned backgrounds. And you can actually post your own quote. So have you ever seen like people that they post those pictures and it's all in the fancy writing and it says dash that person? Yeah. You can create your own. You can create your own pictures. So it does take a little bit of time if you want to, like, if you have like a half hour, hour to kill if you're just, you know, just kind of sitting around. But it's worth it. It's fun. It becomes your own. So if I'm at an event, I'm kind of inspired by something, and there's something going on in my head, I'll just pull out word swag and I'll just, you know, do a post. And then, you know, you can start to brand yourself. So then people are kind of following you for you. And I'm telling you, people really do appreciate originality. It's always great to post about influences, influencers in your life, but when you kind of can start to step into your own power and really own it, people, you start to draw more people in. Here's the other thing. The amount of money that you do or don't make has no relevance to who you are as a person. You could have one dollar in your bank account, but you could post something one day that could change somebody else's life forever. Does that make sense? So just remember, what every everything that you do from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed is about everybody else. As soon as you start making it about you, you're not doing it for the right reasons. You know, Robin Sharma, does anybody follow Robin? No, follow. I've seen him speak with John Maxwell, Jack Canfield, He's, he has uh, on his YouTube channel, he has every week he releases mastery sessions or about 10 or 15 minutes of amazing content. So his first book um, was The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. <laughs> he was a Canadian lawyer who was just very, very enlightened. It's a great book. Uh, his, his, one of my other favorite books that he wrote was called The Leader Who Had No Title. Uh, S H A R N A. He's the most calming, just amazing, amazing man. Like you, you'll, you'll fall in love with him. Like he's just, he's so great. Mm -hmm. And he talks about if you want to make millions, you got to go serve millions. If you want to make billions, you got to serve billions. This is a this is a numbers game, guys. Like. You're not going to change your life if you're not changing enough other people's lives. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's, you have to have such an obsessive drive to want this that nothing's going to get in your way. Like literally, you're just like kicking people out of your way. 
And don't feel bad that those are the people you're kicking your family. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll still be there. But you can't allow people to block you from achieving what you want to achieve. Like, I never thought I would ever be where I am today if you would have told me what I'm doing three and a half years ago, this is what you're going to be doing right now. I would have said you were completely crazy out of your mind because I didn't know I was going to be good at this. I always believed in myself, but I didn't have enough people around me that believed in me. And I mean, how many people in this room just feel good about who's around them right now? Mm -hmm. Right? Like you guys know that every person in here, they have your back, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you need to carry with you every single day. Just knowing that you're a text or a phone call away from someone on your team, or you can just bounce something off of them. Or you know that person's gonna be open to receiving what you have to, what to say, and, 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 and what you're feeling, and what you need to work through. And just know this, that the more that you don't reach out, the less likely you're gonna succeed. I implore, all of my teammates to reach out to me if they're ever feeling anything. Because they're not gonna know how to work through that pain that I've already gone through. Because we're all on the same path. I don't care what company you're in, network marketing is an industry. We are all on the same path together. We are all walking that straight line. And you would be foolish to think that there aren't speed bumps, potholes, roadblocks. It's not a straight line. It, you're, you're weaving in and out the entire time. And just remember that when you're at that point, like, so I'll share something with you guys. Um, I, uh, one of my coaches is Todd Falcone. Does, does anyone know who Todd Falcone is? He's, he's my business coach. And you know, he said to me the other day, he goes, I need you to continue to step out of your comfort zone. He goes, I want you to search for personal trainers in, in Philadelphia on Google, and I want you to start smiling and dialing. And I'm like, Todd, come on. I have, I have a big network, I can, I can do it a different way. He goes, no, I want you to do it. And he goes, I want you to call 35 trainers a day. So, I'm very, I'm very coachable. I'm really doing exactly what you tell me to do if it's going to benefit myself and other people. So I went on Google and I searched personal trainers in Philadelphia and it returned 2.4 million people. I was like, okay, I got some people to call now. <laughs> so, I picked up the phone and something happened to me that hadn't happened in literally three and a half years. I got nervous. Like I literally had butterflies in my stomach and they were the same butterflies that I had when I first said yes to network marketing. When you guys remember that first call you made, whether it's a three way with your own line or by yourself and you're just literally scared shitless. Like you're, you're just, your palms are sweaty, your, your knees are shaking, you're pacing back and forth. Like that's what I was doing, I was like pacing up and down in, in my condo, like back and forth. And after I got through the first call, I felt great. I'm like, oh, another lead source, awesome. So you have to, you guys have to realize that little moment of, of nervousness is the universe saying, do it. Go for it, push through that pain. And that's what Robin talks about. Robin talks about, He's a big skier, and he was on this like ridiculous mountain in the Alps, and, he, and his instructor was up there, and, he, and he's telling Robin they were like a double diamond. He's going, you guys gotta lean into your fear. When you start to sit back in your boots, what do you think's gonna happen? You're gonna fall down. But if you lean into that fear, what do you think's gonna happen? You're gonna gain momentum. And before you know it, you get comfortable, and you start achieving things. Is this good? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. Do times differ on weekends? Great question. So, what you want to focus on, uh, what I focus on is Sunday through Thursday. Those are the peak days on social media, as far as getting people really looking at your content. Weekends, people check out, they don't want to really see before and afters, they don't, like, they, they're just, you know, they're out at bars, they're out at dinner, they're with their friends and family. So you need to cater <laughs> to what's going on with your network. So if, if Fridays and Saturdays are more of like social activities, you need to mimic that of yourself. So post things that you're doing that are social. Does that make sense? So with you guys, I will tell you the same thing with me. I have never ever mentioned my company's name 
on any post ever in three and a half years. Not once. That is the golden rule of social media, not letting the cat out of the bag. Do you guys know what the biggest seller in network marketing is? What's that? Curiosity? Yes. What was it? Curiosity. <laughs> because what does curiosity lead to? They dig deeper, try to figure it out. A question. If they don't ask you questions, what don't you end up giving them? The answer. So that's why if you guys ever see me post the way that I do, you see transformations, you see information, but they have to inbox me and say, what's your program all about? Door swings wide open. So you guys need to do the same. And I, I see other skincare companies and I see other weight loss companies. And we have to band together as an industry to do this the right way because when we verbally vomit everything that we're doing, we know there's a stigma out there. We know there are skeptics out there. We know that people think what we do is a pyramid and it's fake and it's not real and no one makes money. No, people make money. I know them. Yes. So if you've already vomited. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> 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 stop doing that or what? Yes, stop. <laughs> So, but here, so here's the other thing. It's, it's okay. Everyone can stop bombing now and, and just kind of keep everything inside. So when I first started, I, I, I sometimes go back and I look at some of my old posts. I was the most uncompliant associate for my company you would ever meet. Like literally, I could have gotten shut down like that, but I didn't know. I was like, congratulations to Susie for losing seven pounds in ten days. It's not compliant. I mean, that's not compliant. I was, I mean, so we, you all have to suck at some point before you get really good. Because the ch chances are what you went through and what you're going through is someone else's. You can say, Rose, it's okay. I did that too. Here's what you need to do now. Does that make sense? So you just have to keep tugging people along while you're tugging yourself along. Okay? Yes. What, what about the difference? I have a Facebook group. Do you have to be invited or whatever to get into it? Is it a business group or it's is it just business, like a... It's a business group, but then on my Facebook page, I don't post any, anything. No before or after, no, no near him at all. Okay. Um, everybody has their own methods. What worked for me was turning my personal page into my business card. You have to realize that, that you're... The, the most engagement you're gonna get from the algorithm on Facebook is gonna come from you, not a page. So I have a, I have my personal page and then I have a social media business page. The only <laughs> way I get people to look at it, to like it, to comment is to pay. I spend about a $250 a month to get people to follow it, to like it. And they're usually from Malaysia and Indonesia, which I mean, you can help me, but it's no one from the States. Everyone is connected to your personal page. So everyone has that fear. Well, the, the reason why people end up creating those separate pages is because they don't want anyone knowing what they're doing. You know, they think like, they want to create that separate page where like no one can really track what's going on. Does that make sense? So again, you got to just release all of that. Use your own personal page for all of your information. Yeah, I found myself on my business page sharing on my personal page. And you don't, you never want to share. You yeah. never want to share. So when you, so I'll share like if I I do a motivation Monday and a fit tip Friday video on my personal uh, Facebook page and I share it to my business groups that are for my business, not like a, a business page but for my network marketing company, and I'll share it on my network marketing company like you know to to inspire people in my business. The most traction it gets is when it's uploaded and posted to your page. If you post it to a business page and then share it. Facebook, uh, Facebook doesn't like that. That's why, have you ever like uh, maybe uploaded or shared something from YouTube that was just, it just blew your mind and you're like wondering why not, not a lot of people are liking and commenting? It's because Facebook doesn't like you leaving to go to another site, but it, even more, it doesn't like you taking people away from Facebook going to another website that's gonna give that website more traction. 
So they don't. So so your videos will always. So like I'll post the video. Um, like I'll, I'll do a motivation Monday video that'll get maybe a thousand to two thousand views, and then. I also upload them to my YouTube channel. If I were to just upload it on my, onto my YouTube channel and then and then share it onto Facebook, it'll get maybe a quarter of the views. So you want to do things that are going to optimize your engagement. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Thank you. Sorry. When you said not to post things about your business, okay. Now we have before and after pictures and things like that. Right. Now, so do you, want me, do you want me to describe what that would look like? Yes. Yeah. 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 It says Miriam. They dig Get rid of it. And they want to. Yeah. Get rid of it. So we're just supposed to be kind of anonymous. So if you go, if you go, if you go to my the description of what I do. Right. Um, it says health and wellness coach, prosperity coach, success coach for personal trainers. That's what we do. Right. You guys, you guys what would they up. say? Like, what would be good for the area? Skincare professional. Anti-aging. Anti-aging specialist. Anti-aging activist. Yeah. activist. So on your profile, you're talking about. Yeah, I just under under, under your, your you nothing. You don't. Know, you have no clue yeah. what I do. Yeah, just general. People way. start to assume. Are you with beach body? Mm -hmm. Are you with yeah. Advo Care? Yeah. Who's with? Yeah. Okay. How would you? Say, I'm, I'm new to Murray. Perfect. So congratulations for saying yes. Thank you. So, if Nuri has a lot of really great, on, I have yours, Facebook, and they have a lot of really great um, that I share. Oh, we, so, you, so is it best to share that on my business page? Don't ever share. Don't even, even, even the company. Well, no, no, so you click on the picture. Okay. Save it to your camera roll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Upload it yourself. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't just share it. Okay. Upload it yourself. Don't share somebody else. Okay. And when you like, so before you, you guys do before and afters of, of people's yeah. faces, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So like something you can and and what's the typical time frame for transformation? 60, 90 days, 120 days, around that. 30, 30, 90. 30, 90. So yeah. you could say you know like congratulations to to uh, you know my associate or my friend Rose. For her incredible transformation in the last 90 days. Unbelievable how you can take 15 years off your life. Something like that. That'll generate a lot of curiosity. Yeah, you're not saying inbox me. Yeah. You know, right. find out how. Yeah. You send me a message. Yeah. <laughs> That's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't put your website either. No, Facebook doesn't even like you want, you want to like talk about what you're doing, but have them know what, what, what are they what are they doing? How did they take 15 that how did she take 15 years off her life? Well, I'd love to talk to you. Now, you guys, so I created my own qualifying questions. Would you like me to tell you what my qualifying questions yes. are? Yes. Okay. So whether it's a face transformation or any kind of physical transformation, I qualify every single person that I work with or I get on the phone. So if I posted a picture of a before and after and Rose reached out to me and she said, Hey Scott, saw the transformation, would, would love to find out more, you know, what's, what's your program all about? Now this is on Facebook Messenger, okay? Mm -hmm. So don't ever give information out through Facebook Messenger, through text, through email. Everything is done on your phone. Does that make sense? If you don't, if you find yourself <laughs> connecting with someone that is too busy to get on the phone, do you even want them in your business? Isn't, isn't our, our businesses are done over the phone, right? So you want people that can actually find time to work. Like, I don't care how busy you might think you are. Like, everybody has kids. Everyone's kids play soccer. Everyone's cooking dinner. Like, you're not doing something 24 hours a day. So that just defines that person as curious or serious, right? And that's what you're looking to do. So the first question that I ask someone, I would say, Rose, Thank you so much for reaching out. When is the best day, time, and number to reach you on so we can discuss? That's it. <coughs> so if they can't even answer that, bye-bye. <coughs> then they might come back and say, well, you know, Scott, can you, can you tell me a little bit before I get on the phone? Say, you know, I do my business over the phone, so do you have a time that works for you? <coughs> Sometimes, you know, and I know this irritates me, and I know it irritates probably other people, when they read the message, and they don't respond. 
general, like you see that little, mm -hmm. that, little yeah. that little picture of them pop up, and they, like, and you're like, why aren't you writing anything? So it's it's okay because a lot of people I call them assholes. They will ask, <laughs> ask, 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 and I'm not going to give out any information. So if they do respond to that, Rose says, yeah, um, you know, great, you know, how's Tuesday at 2 o'clock? I'll say, awesome. What specifically are you looking to achieve and maintain? So do you hear the importance of that question? So, because we, you, you guys and I both know that we're never going to stop doing what we're doing. So when, when you hear achieve, that kind of links to quick fix. But when you link achieve and maintain, that is now a lifestyle. So, I mean, we're, we're not really about, you know, the health and working out and shapes and all that kind of stuff. We're about and aging. So what would be the question? Like how, well, just, how would I do the same qualifying thing in this business? I don't think that she would maintain kind of well, don't, don't you want to maintain looking young? Maintain looking young. I mean, I mean, you don't want to like just lose your wrinkles and get back, right? <laughs> you want to, you want to maintain. Or you can say what are you doing? I mean, you know, if they don't know what you're doing, just you know, you're, you're going to this. So the second qualifying question is, what what are you looking to achieve and maintain? And if you know, Rose says, you know, I, I see the picture. You know, I have these bags under my eyes that just will not go away. You'll say, great. On a scale of one to ten, how serious are you about achieving and maintaining that? So when you do the scale method, I only get on the phone with people that are seven and above. If someone's like a four or five, they're kind of like dancing on that plate. I don't want to do the dance. I want people that are ready for a change now. So then at that point, when you know Rose comes back, I'm an eight. I look like I'm tired all the time, which you don't. Just use <laughs> um, you'll say great Tuesday at 2 o'clock works I have the perfect solution for you is it okay if I send you some information to look at prior to our call now here's the other mistake you guys have videos and stuff yeah. so here's the mistake that a lot of people make so if the call's on Tuesday and it's only Saturday you never want to send the information right then and there because then they have three days to question, Google, search, look up yeah. reasons why not to get on the phone with you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I always send information 10 minutes before the call. So if our call's at 2, 145, she's getting information. Because the first question I ask everybody is how did you feel about the information you looked at? Does everyone know the feel plus pound method? Okay. So again, what I also implore you guys to do is for our posting system on Facebook, we all like and comment on each other's stuff. Because the more traffic is drawn to that post, the more it'll go up in the algorithm on your own timeline, so more of your network will see it. So when my team posts at 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. every single day, so I know on my newsfeed I go in, I just like and comment on every one of my teammates' stuff. Because by the end, there's like 30 likes, 30 comments. That way their entire network's then, and then it's gonna draw this curiosity like, you know, awesome job, great job, that's great, you look awesome, and then you'll get like one, one or two comments that says, what's, what's this all about? What's this program? Right? Yes. Yeah, we, we all have lots of people, friends, Facebook friends. How do we know who's really seen our post? Do we, we don't. Can't. Most people watch. So I, I had someone enroll with me about three weeks ago from high school that had never reached out to me before. And we've been friends on Facebook for seven years. So there are people that are actively liking and commenting on your stuff, and there are people that just look and watch. Because they don't want to hit that like or comment button because God forbid we know that they want to change something, right? So they just kind of watch and they look over, and then when they, 
when the pain becomes great enough for them at a certain point, then they'll send you a private message because they don't want to be seen on that post like, hey, Marine, what's, what's this program all about? That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So you want to do at least three Facebook posts a day as well. Morning, afternoon, night. You hashtag those guys? You don't need to hashtag those. But you always want to, you know, again, Facebook, they, it's, you got to understand it's about lifestyle. So if you're out with girlfriends at dinner, take a selfie. Facebook loves selfies. Uh, if you're doing something really interesting or something that you've never done before, post about it, talk about it. You know, if you have an event coming up, you know, do some intriguing things to lead up to that event without mentioning what that event is. When you guys are at your conventions, make sure you post multiple times a day from your convention, but never with anything that says Miriam in it because people want to know where you're at, where all these happy, fun people are, right? I know it, it sounds kind of like you're, you're, you're like hiding. You're not hiding. We, in network marketing, we're, we're not ashamed to tell people what we do, but the there are so many negative influences out there that we want to draw the right people in that are just so curious and open to what we're doing that they just walk right through our doors. It also makes you not salesy. Yeah. And people hate that. I don't yeah. want to be salesy. Oh, yeah. You know, again, yeah. you're not, you're not salesy. Guys, we're in sales. Like, I'm sorry. Like, whether you like it or not, like, you're in sales. Like, this is, do, you, do you guys know what the highest paid profession in the world is? Sales. We make more than doctors, lawyers, the president. That was number two. That's it. I'm done. Everybody's in sales. So, my buddy, my buddy Zach Slogan, uh, who trains a lot on this, um, I went to go see him speak at, a, at an event, and he said that he read somewhere that by the end of 2017, one in every three households will be partnered with a network marketing company. And do you know that an extra $500 a month would cut the divorce rate in half? $500. That takes care of a car. That takes care of part of a mortgage. That takes care of dance class and soccer camps and whatever else. So yeah, we're in sales. We're giving people the opportunity to change their lives. Okay. Is this good? Yes. What would be your uh, opinion on the fact that Miriam creates social media postings for us? I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, my, my company has has pages where we, we get before and afters from too, but. No, these are actual, like, you, you, I've it has, it has the symbol on it and everything. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 I mean, you can have that too, but you don't forget, you can edit and crop any picture you want. Like, you, like, I, you know, we have something called the Ice of Body Challenge, which is our big, like, weight loss challenge, and if it has, like, a little symbol there, I'll save it, and I'll crop the picture to get rid of it. So you gotta understand, like, the company does that, but they're supposed to. That, that's how they market, you know, their businesses. But, it, but it's our job not to keep what we do as a secret, but to keep the curiosity at such a high level that we have so many people reaching out to us. Because we're the ones that have to share this opportunity, not Google. And if you, if people keep going to Google, they're gonna keep, like, there was a girl that I pulled up on Instagram, and I sent her information, she still went to Google anyway, which people will do. And she said to me, she goes, I like the product, I, I wanna do this, but, you know, I read some things where people said when they go off of it, they gain all the way back and then some. I said, all right, listen, Jess, let's stop talking about, you know, the plan. So if you're a trainer and you give someone a nutritional program to follow, and they stop following, what's gonna happen? <laughs> and she goes, oh, okay, well, you know, wait, I said, okay, so what's, what's the difference here? She goes, you're right, let's do this. That's it. So you gotta understand, let them, they're gonna look at whatever they wanna look at, but you have to be the one to kind of diffuse all of those things because you're the expert now. You're the one that said yes. You know what's real and what's not. Not Google. Make sense? Yeah. I, I think I think what what you're saying is our company is giving us really good kind of promotional tools to put out there like, on Facebook. Like 25 percent off and free shipping. No, 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 no. no, 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 no information. So, so, so here's the thing. I can't tell you what is right and what is wrong. But what I do know from a global standpoint, from events that I've been to, is that 
if you keep what you do as very curious driven mm -hmm. and not letting people know what you do by mentioning your company's name, it's going to benefit your network. That's that, that is just my you can you can do whatever you want with the information, you, but I'm telling you, like even when people comment on something like is this isogenics, I won't actually delete the comment. I don't want it on my page. Okay. What about business page though? Because we are if, if it's a private business page where it's yes. actually off yes. network, absolutely that's fine. Where people like on Facebook though, not on, on Facebook. Facebook. But if, if it's a business like yes. if it's a private we could business post page, it, we could boost it, we could yeah. make it a yeah. yeah. that's I mean, not private. Right, that's not right. Nothing. So publicly, you never see anything about isogenics on my page. The only time I'm talking about it is in my personal business groups and my personal product user groups. Are you on personal? I am public. So you're not saying you're okay. No, no, you, you can anyone can anyone can look at me. Yes, yeah. Because I still have people asking me, what is this? Because don't don't forget, it's, it's not about who's in your network right now, it's the new people you draw in. Mm -hmm. Because you want the new people that come in not to know what you're doing either. Because if they come in and they, and they scroll through and they see everything that you're doing, they're gonna like, oh, put another new name around. Another skincare person, yes. If you're friended out, then should you start a new page and no, so because I'm most a lot of the people on there are near him. Yeah, I, I, I love y'all, but I don't want you know, I want new people. <laughs> so, so, so here's the thing so that's that's a, that's a what's your name? I'm Lisa. Hi. Hi. Good to meet you. So, so that's, Hi, that's, 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 a, that's a great point. So, on, on Facebook, you're allowed 5,000 friends and then you're allowed unlimited followers. So I have a lot of people from my company that, that request my friendship and I love them, but if you have a public profile, just let them follow you. Because if they follow you, you can still like and comment back to them. You, you can still get on their page, they can still get on yours, but they're not taking up those 5,000 requests. If, so I will go through when I reach close to my limit and I'll <clears throat> unfriend people that I know that I'm friends with and I just follow their page. So it allows me to still recruit and bring more people on. Do you unfriend them or unfollow them? Un, no, well, if you unfriend, you're still following. So if you click the unfriend button, it'll still say follow. So you're still following. So it just clears up room for more people on. You want people in your network that aren't in your company. You can't recruit. I mean, we can't recruit each other, right? So you want people that you can recruit. So it's it's like like Lisa, mm -hmm. like it's nothing personal. Like we we want people that we can recruit and grow our team with, not the people that are already on our team. Can the followers see? Yes. They can see everything they can, they can like, they can comment, they can do everything. There's nothing different. Nothing okay. different. Except they're just, okay. They're just not taking up someone on your friend list. Okay. When you unfriend them, they know that you unfriend them. No. No. Nothing at all, because you, you can still follow them, you can still like and comment. Okay. I won't tell people. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to hurt anybody's business. Yeah, I mean, you've uh, had a lot of international contacts, too. How did you build your business internationally? You're building internationally right now, right? Yes, so that's going to lead me into the, the, the okay. next part. So does anybody have any other questions about Facebook? One question yes. about the, the liking and generating the comments. Yep. We all do it. Um, but I have some friends that are like, oh, that's so cute how you all like and comment about, you know, they know that we're all reps. We're all a family. Yeah. Support, yeah. Okay. Like you got to support your team first and foremost. Like you got to support your team. That's where it is. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Some people do and some people don't. Because don't forget, like, you're friends with those people, but you might not have that many mutually friends in common. So they don't, like, if someone's friends with you, they might not know who Rose is. They just see someone liking and commenting. They don't really, no, no one really looks that deep yeah. into who's liking and commenting. Yeah. Yeah. One more question about posts. Like, I always feel like I have a really good post I'm not gonna put anymore up for a while. 
I want people to see that one post, but you're saying do three a day. Yeah. Because that's not going to diffuse it. And no, you, you at three, the, the lifespan of a post is about three to four hours really? to get traction. Unless, yeah. now somebody likes it. It'll it back put it back into the feed and it'll get more traction, yes. Okay. So do you think that, just from your opinion, that we should go back to the before and afters on our thing all the time? Because we have lost that. And when I first started, everybody was posting their before and afters, and now we, we've all tucked them away on our private pages. And <coughs> I think how long have you been with the company? Four and a half years. Okay. So my honest belief in any business, whether it's being a regular personal trainer, health and wellness professional, skincare professional, healthy aging specialist, what sells the most? Seeing what can happen. If you're just talking about it, people want, they want to, like, like, I want to see what these people look like. So I do before and afters Sunday through Thursday, five days a week. I've done that every, every, th every Sunday through Thursday for the last three and a half years. I've literally posted thousands of before and afters. Because, what's that? Every post? Every, every day? No, 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 uh, every night. My night, my night, my nighttime post, my eight, my, so that's good. 8 p.m. post is always before and afters. Okay, so do you think that, because this has been one thing that I, I've watched and I, it kind of like, we felt like everybody was so sick of us posting before and after pictures. It doesn't matter. But so we just don't worry about those people. We don't want, we don't want those We don't people. want those people anyway. We want to, like, I can't, so for all the negative people that like, like, I, I block and delete people every single day. Like, I don't, I don't have time for negativity. I don't want negativity anywhere around my page. I love blocking and deleting. It's invigorating. I love it. Love it. I've had family members block and delete me. Perfect. That's great. Yeah. I can bring someone on here. So the, the, the other thing is that you, you can't get attached to any of the, the outcomes of this. this is, remember, this is fun. This isn't so serious unless you make it serious, and then it doesn't become fun. Well, one more question about that. So in the morning, you're doing an inspirational post. Inspiration in the morning, and I so so I typically do inspiration in the morning, lifestyle of lunch, before and after, at night. I like that. And that's all. All your morning social media, so Instagram, Gavin. Yeah. Except for LinkedIn. Oh, yeah, and you guys, yeah, all your posts should be public. They should not be friends only. They should not be friends of friends. You guys need to make everything that you do public and open so everyone can see what you're doing. I have a question. I have grandchildren, and my kids freak out when I post their pictures. I do those friends only. My kids, my husband's a cop. So that's part of my lifestyle. I have to keep my kids. So I might. In my agreement, I can't have my son anywhere on social media. Wow. So, um, how can we do it though? Because Heidi, um, Heidi, you can. So, so if you go to this, um, basically, when you do the post, there's a little globe at the mm -hmm. top of your your post that means public. You can actually click on it, and you can change it to friends only. You can, you can, you can, you can actually every time you post, you, you can, can actually put friends only. You can actually, if there's someone you don't want seeing certain things, you can take that person and they never see anything like that. I'll show you, because I can't make my kids public for what my husband does, and I don't make my husband public in my public Facebook. But you can do friends only, so just friends your friends, me. or you can select certain people. <laughs> so just like your, the family, so, so Trish can, somebody using their picture. So then don't post them. She wants different lives. I, I, so, so here's what I do. So I can't post my son, um, but like one time I took a picture of his sneakers next to my sneakers, and I did something like that. Or a card he made me for Father's Day. Um, or like his plate of food next to my plate of food. You know, or pictures of his new underpants I got. Like stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Go back. Get back to the basics. Go back the to the before and afters. The before and afters that we get from corporate are all branded with the near end. So would you suggest no, dropping that? And yeah, I'll put like an emoji smiley face okay. over it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs>
and just know the exact amount of money that's getting deposited into their bank account every two weeks because that's what they get accustomed to. So, you know, I've worked with a lot of top leaders and a lot of, a lot of big companies. <coughs> and on their profile, it, you know, it says millionaire or, you know, multiple seven figure earner. And I even tell them, get rid of it. Because here's the thing if you are that successful, that's amazing because that means you've helped a lot of lives. But it's not relatable. That's the top 1%. It's even less than that. The top 1% make over $100,000. The top 3% of the country makes over $100,000 a year. So you want to be as relatable as possible because some people sitting in this room right now, and you don't have to raise your hand, but you can't even imagine what it would be like to make a million dollars a year, let alone see what that even looks like in their bank account. Am I right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Me too. So, but you have to imagine that. But you don't need to project it. So you need to have millionaire habits before you even become one. Right? You need to live the life of a millionaire before you become one. But you could also pretend like you're driving a Ferrari. You don't have to put your seven-figure earner, but if you post that picture and you're a Ferrari, you can go out. I so I mean, I'm just not into the that whole image mm -hmm. thing. Like I, I never post pictures of my car. I don't. I, it's just some people are like that. They'll like they'll be leaning on the rear, you know, like like this. Like that's just not. It's just not me. I. Gary Vaynerchuk says. You know, he, he, he talked the other day, he goes, you get one at bat. He goes, you get one at bat in life, that's it. He goes, it's not about things, it's not about objects, it's not about cars, it's not about, it's about your whip, or your ride, or your clothes. And he said that like, and he, he, he curses a lot. He says that. So, and I, I, I like quoting people for beta, so apologies for the, the cursing. So he, he says, <laughs> He said, um, he said, you guys don't really realize how much of a gift you guys were really given. And he goes, the number one gift that everyone has is their own life. He goes, do you know the, the, the small percentage of a chance it was to actually for you to be created? It's like one in a trillion, like I, it was some ridiculous number. He goes, you're not, you're not a fucking flashlight. <laughs> he goes, you're not a ladybug. You're not a microphone. He goes, you're a person. You're a human. He goes, you, like, and then I'm like, he's right. I'm not a flashlight. <laughs> so we, we, we all have something special. All of us. Gary Vaynerchuk, he's great. Gary V. V. E. He's amazing. So we all have something special. And you don't need to, and it just has to be you. That's what is special. Not your car, not your house. If it, it's, it's okay if it means something to you because that's a sense of accomplishment, but it's you. You are what is special. You create the car that you drive. You create the body you carry. You create the house that you live in. Does that all make sense? You're the creator of the life that you're looking to design. So the other thing about LinkedIn is that people, there's a lot of people that train on LinkedIn. Has anyone ever taken a LinkedIn course? No. You, you guys have? Did you did you get anything from it? It's, it's through corporate. Okay. But like you know, my job, my, my okay. Job. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, so the, there's a lot of people network marketers that do train on LinkedIn, and I've looked at a lot of their stuff, and they have some good stuff, they do. But they're not full-time network marketers. I am. And I got really good at it, really fast, I'm self-taught, and I had to fail forward a lot. Like, I literally was completely out of control with LinkedIn when I started getting on there, because I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. And I was literally connecting with anyone and everyone that had a pulse. And I was having some bad conversation. I was getting hung up on. I was getting yelled at for calling. I wasn't cold calling, but <coughs> like, why are you connecting with me? 
And then I took a, a step back and, and my direct upline and one of you know my mentors at my company is a woman by the name of Susan Slaughter. Does anyone heard of Susan? Susan is amazing. Um, she, she speaks at GoPro. I mean, she's an incredible multiple seven figure earner in my company. And very early on in my in my network marketing experience, she to this day will still tell me that you need to wake up and look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, how do I recruit me today? Because you said yes for a reason, somebody else will. And then I said, that's it. I have to start recruiting me. And they're on LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn, I took a step back and I wrote down three attributes that made, made up of me. Certified sports nutritionist, certified personal trainer, health club owner. So I started searching and connecting and conversing with me. The law of conversation went up. I was having more follow-ups and here are the raw numbers. If you can get someone onto a follow-up call, you have a 25% chance of enrolling them in your business because there are four outcomes on LinkedIn. They say yes, they say no, they're too busy building a shed for their dog, or they don't show up at all. That's it. And I like those numbers. I can deal with a 25% chance of someone saying yes. But you also have to connect with enough people. Now, when I started really honing in on LinkedIn, I had about 700 connections last August. I have 10,200 now with the free version. So everyone thinks they have a paper premium. You don't. You don't. You just have to build the right kind of network. Maureen's taken my training. I specifically teach people how to create the network that is a mirror image of yourself that reflects people that actually want to do talk to you. So I tell people, list everything that you've ever done in your entire career. Debbie, what are some of the things you did for Aaron? Um, I was a teacher, I worked in the corporate world. Which you corporate? Um, I worked in the pharmaceutical side. Awesome. Sales or no, corporate research. Side? Research. Okay. <laughs> what else? Um, I taught biology. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I had 20, uh, 20 years staying in flight planning. Awesome. Okay. So, you know, on LinkedIn, you should have your party planning experience, your pharma job, um, obviously you're now a global skincare specialist, and you want to connect with people just like that. So for me, um, you want to search for people that are just like you, that don't have your opportunity. So I would go on there and I would search for personal trainer, comma, fitness club owner, because that's what I was. Chances are they don't have what I have. Just like if you were to search educator, comma, skincare, or educator, comma, wellness. You want people that have a healthy living mindset, but have the same work life path that you've been on. Because here's what it comes down to, relatable conversation. So, Debbie, you know the pain points of an educator. You know what it's like for an educator to say yes to the 12 months of salary in nine months, and then scrounging for income for June 20th to August 20th, right? That's when they start tutoring on the side, and they work at camps. They stop spending money. Right, I can't do anything for the next 12 weeks. Right. So, when I would talk to an educator, I would say, you know, Debbie, you know, I know you can relate to this, but you know, when, when I would, when that last day of school would end, yes, there would be a sense of relief, but there would also be a, a, a sense of anxiety would set in because I know that I was cut off my income for the next 90 days. Could you relate to that? And I would say, yeah. And I said, well, that all led me to saying yes to an opportunity with a, a global wellness company called Erie. Have you ever heard of them? Door swings wide open. So with personal trainers, I do the same. Well, Lisa, what did you do before this? I sold real estate, and then I, <coughs> sold, I was with Party Plan, with a jewelry company, for 13 years prior. So real estate agents are gold mine on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Oh. And Reason being, real estate agents already have the entrepreneurial mindset because they don't get paid unless they sell a house. 
So I connect well with, with real estate agents because personal trainers only get paid when they train, and real estate agents only get paid when they close a house. But real estate agents also have to wait 60 to 90 days for that money to come in from the close. What are they doing in between? Right. Exactly. Right, hard. So, so the market can go yeah, up and down. Interest rates fluctuate, like, you know, then they're going to rent holes. Yeah. Like, so yeah. so, so you, you have to have a relatable conversation with the people that you want in your network. So when I talk to a trainer, you know, I would share my story. And I would say, you know, for me, I lived in a life of anxiety and stress because, you know, if a client didn't show up, I, got, I didn't get paid. If a client canceled, I didn't get paid. If I got sick or they got sick, I didn't get paid. And God forbid, I'm on vacation for a week. I didn't make money that entire week. But here was my aha moment. When I said yes to this opportunity, I was taking my first vacation with my family in five years, not training, and I made $600 that week. And I said, comparatively speaking, that wouldn't amount to the same amount that I would make that week training. But that was the first time ever in my 14 years of personal training that I ever made one dollar not training people. And then the trainer was like, whoa. And I said, yeah. I said, now, three and a half years later, I've been able to go completely online with my businesses, and I've been able to retire from one-on-one -on -one personal training. Then you're gonna get those people that are still stuck in their story. Well, I really love doing it. <laughs> I just love, it fills me up, I just love training people all day long. <laughs> I mean, so for like so for me it was also a frustrating point because I was the guy training you before you were going out to dinner with your friends when I was the one who wanted to go out to dinner with you but I couldn't because I had a whole book of clients till 9 o'clock and now I'm living that life and so it doesn't matter if it's the personal training industry, the education industry, the real estate industry, we all have that pain. And pain is one of the greatest connecting points you could have with someone. Because pain can link to relatability. You can sympathize with those people. Everyone that you get on the phone with, whether you know them or you don't, they have a wall that's up to here. That is just, they want to keep up. But the more that you can relate, the more that you can sympathize, the more that you can connect, that wall comes down. And I'm sure some of you have experienced that on even some of your calls when people say, you know, it's, it's, a, lot of money, it's a lot of money for, for skin stuff. Mm -hmm. So Grant Cardone teaches you to actually agree with the consumer. Rose, I know, it does sound like a lot of money because I felt the same exact way when I said yes three and a half years ago, but here's what I found. I mean, I've never looked better. My skin looks like I'm 20, and I have people asking me all the time what I'm doing. Because when you agree with the consumer, or you agree with the person, comes right down, but you, they, they, you're letting them in, right? But if you go against, no, it's not expensive. It's only $11 a day over 30 days. That's not expensive. <laughs> right? When you, when you push back on them, it keeps that wall up. So you want to connect with people that are just like you. Now, LinkedIn is a very, very, very unique animal because Microsoft just bought them out about three months ago. So they're actually trying to compete with the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the Snapchats, as far as really opening the game up to not just regular business networking. But here's another interesting statistic. There's 485 million people worldwide. And this is how I started to build my business globally. The average income is between 75 to $100,000. So people have money. They want to spend it, they want to make more. Right? You're talking about the LinkedIn. Yeah. So the great thing about LinkedIn is that you can search by country, you can search by city, you can search by state. So if you want to build a team in Toronto, you can just connect the people in Toronto. <coughs> you want to build in Shanghai, search for Shanghai. Have fun. Can you give us an example of a one a good post that you've worked like on LinkedIn? So my inspiration that I put on Facebook, I also have connected to LinkedIn as well. Um, 
I don't do before and afters every single night. I do them maybe two times a week because it's a different network. But I also post relatable information about my network to my network. So my network, my 10,200 connections, are all fitness and health related people. Just like yours should be farmer reps and educators, just like yours should be real estate agents. Because then you can post an interesting article related to real estate and what's going on with the interest rates, blah, 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 blah. And thank God I'm doing what I'm doing now where I don't have to be affected by this. Or whatever's going on with pharma. How it's connected to the FDA, and this is that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're showing that. So, it, but it's not non controversial, but just bringing kind of like to light what you were to where you are right now. And that's the other thing. You need to have a complete profile. And just like on Facebook, on LinkedIn, you should have nowhere, anywhere on your profile, anything about your company. Anywhere. Yes. So it says like my job title and my company. Okay. So what do you put there? <laughs> so I, I highly advise you. So so connect with me on LinkedIn. You can see what I do, and you can if you've ever looked at Maureen's profile, I I helped her build that out. Um, what I what I do with my company is I actually break down the meaning of my company into three separate experiences. And experiences on LinkedIn are jobs. So for me, um, I'm an online wellness coach, I'm a healthy lifestyle specialist, and I'm a success coach to personal trainers. That equates to my network marketing business, health, wellness, and prosperity. So you guys are you know, healthy aging specialists, you know, your skincare specialists, your prosperity coaches, right? Mm -hmm. Those are all things that you can create, and the descriptions should be that of what that means to you and what you want to do for other people. So there's a summary section on LinkedIn that really allows you to unzip yourself and show people who you are. So. If I was using Debbie as an example, um, Debbie, do you need kids? Yeah, three. Three kids. So the summary should be about who you are and what you want to do for people right now. So Debbie would write something like, um, in being a mother of three beautiful children, loving wife, um, ex-educator, and you know, professional in the pharmaceutical um, industry, I learned a lot about life and what it really means. And seeing the world through my children's eyes and all the people that I've connected with, I realized that life is possible and you can achieve anything that you want. I wake up each day with an insatiable passion to connect with as many people as I can so I can show them what is truly capable. That's really good. <laughs> 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 okay, so I had about 15 minutes. So LinkedIn is is huge. It's growing. Um, in the last year, it's gone from 285 million users to 485 million. And right now, I'm averaging anywhere between 24 to 40 conversations a week. There's a lot of people that want to talk. Yes? Um, do, you, uh, do you do like automated things for LinkedIn for connections? Just like Facebook? Food Sweet Buffer? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Anything that's going to, like, like, I have the uh, ability, much like Lisa does, to, we can be online all day long if we wanted to. But if you still have those pockets of time and you're still doing other things to outproduce your problems, then utilize Food Sweet Buffer in the meantime. Yes? I forgot, did you say that Instagram and Facebook, I know you can connect with the same posts that go on, on LinkedIn? So, Food Sweet, you can link to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, you can connect to Twitter. I don't have that. 
Instagram, you can connect to Facebook and Twitter. Are you saying Hoot Suite? H O O T S U I T E or Buffer. They're apps that you can, they're post planners. Okay. They save you a lot of time. So it's a great, it's a great, what's your first name? Christine. Christine? Mm -hmm. Good to meet you. So it's, it's, it's a great point because the way that I build my business is the way that I connect with people, which is organically. So getting all the friends and followers I have on Facebook to all the people that I have built and connected with on, on LinkedIn, I put that work in. I put that time in because I care about my business and I care about the people that I connect with. So there are a lot of people that will like tell you to do all those automated things and you know get more likes, get more followers. I don't believe I want an organic <laughs> network of people that are just like me. There are people that I want to connect with. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it, it does it take longer? Yes, but once you hit that little tipping point where you have a lot of people, then it just kind of pours over and then all these people start showing up. It just takes time. It's not supposed to happen overnight, you guys all know that this is not a get rich quick thing. This takes time, this takes effort, this takes energy. It is work, but I could, this is fun work. Like, I love it. Like, there's, there's nothing better. So on the LinkedIn thing, you're doing your two, you know, before and after the week, and your inspirational posts in the morning, and then some informational stuff. Do you ever like, reach out to people or you just wait for them to come to you? So, so you do want to connect with people. So I, I, I'm a LinkedIn trainer. I get hired by companies to train teams and individuals on LinkedIn. And honestly, like I could probably stand up here and talk for about six hours for LinkedIn. And I want to, I want to help you guys. Um, I have, I have people that, 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 that pay me good money to, to train them on this, but I wanted to do something for you guys. So I have a few products that people can utilize that can purchase, but I also wanted to do something for the team. Um, how many of you guys feel like that you really don't know what you're doing on LinkedIn? <laughs> so everyone needs to speak because Outside of just your profile, there, there's so much I can show you with publishing posts, which is your own blog site, within LinkedIn, with groups, joining specific groups where you're you're connected on LinkedIn, but they're not part of your connections, but you can make them by starting relevant discussions to have them start connecting with you. I did a post the other day in a group that got 13 trainers to reach out to me, asking me what I was doing. Does that make sense? Uh, you know, looking to see who's looking at what you're doing when you post, right? Um, there, there literally is, I could be on LinkedIn from the minute I get up to the minute I go to sleep. I mean, there's that much to do. You can build a huge network very, very quickly, but you have to follow a system. Just like you guys have a system for what you're doing with Miriam, you have to follow a specific system with this. So I'm gonna, actually let me just end this. Bye guys. No.